How do electric car tax credits work? This latest spending initiative was intended to extend the current incentives and allow those makers like Tesla and General Motors, who had run out of available credits, to be eligible for them again. The measure would have also pared back the maximum federal tax credit from $7,500 to $7,000. That said, the current program still is in effect and there are plenty of ins and outs to consider if you're going to take advantage of the program. Here is what you need to know. Federal tax credit worth $7,500. Chances are, you've heard of the most significant government incentive. A federal tax credit of up to $7,500 for certain alternative energy cars. That can drive down the cost of a more fuel-efficient car, but it doesn't apply in all circumstances. The tax credit was passed in a 2009 bill and still applies to 2010 and newer plug-in electric vehicles. You don't get the tax credit right away. The tax credit is just that, a tax credit. Manufacturers often advertise it as a discount on the car's price, but it isn't. Instead, it's a government policy that allows you to claim up to $7,500 in credit against the federal income taxes you owe in the year in which you buy the car. In other words, it reduces your tax liability. If you're eligible for a refund, you'll get whatever the amount of your credit on top of that. Buyers must still pay the price they negotiate for the car, whether paying it in cash or folding it into the loan amount. They can then claim the credit the next time they file their taxes. That credit lowers your tax liability. If your tax bill is lower than the credit, you'll receive the balance as a refund. However, you can't roll that credit or any remaining balance into the next tax year. It applies to EV, plug-in hybrid, and fuel cell vehicles. The law states that the credit applies to road-going vehicles that are charged from an external source and have battery packs with capacities of 4 kilowatt hours or greater. The base credit is $2,500 with $417 per kWh above 4 kWh, not to exceed $5,000 for the full $7,500 credit. This formula applies to all battery electric vehicles as well as plug-in hybrids. In practice, here's how the tax credit works. A standard 2021 Toyota Prius hybrid will not qualify because it can't be plugged into an external power source. But the 2021 Toyota Prius Prime will, because of its plug-in capability, which is good for the first $2,500 of the credit. Because of its 8.8 kWh battery, it will be eligible for an additional $2,000 in credits. The 2021 Toyota RAV4 Prime Plug-in Hybrid, which has a larger 18.1 kWh battery, is eligible for the full $7,500 credit. Some electric cars are no longer eligible. Glancing at that list, however, you may notice that some pure electric vehicles don't qualify. Why? They're victims of their success. The full credit is available on the first 200,000 vehicles a manufacturer builds. Beyond that, the credit begins to sunset. It winds down gradually, first dropping to half, then expiring about a year after that 200,000 sale. State and local incentives where you live. Though the federal government's effort makes up the lion's share of government EV discounts, some states and local governments have incentive programs to help new car buyers afford something more efficient. These can be tax credits, rebates, reduced vehicle taxes, single occupant carpool lane access stickers, and exemptions from registration or inspection fees. The Department of Energy maintains an interactive list of state level incentives, while Plug in America posts an interactive map of EV incentives. Your electric utility may help. Lastly, it's not just governments that can help you with the cost of a new EV. Some local electric utilities have incentive programs to help buyers get into electric vehicles. After all, they're among the ones that benefit when you turn your fuel dollars into electricity dollars. These can be as significant as a rebate. The Omaha Public Power District, for instance, offers a $2,500 rebate to customers who purchase a new EV and home charging station. Or they may be as small as discounted electric rates for charging an EV outside peak hours. Should I act now or wait? The current federal program is generous and there are many affordable EVs coming to the market from manufacturers who have large banks of these credits to give. If you're looking to make the transition to an EV or a plug-in hybrid, you may want to act sooner than later. However, if you have your heart set on a Tesla or perhaps GM's new Hummer EV or Cadillac Lyric, both of which launch next year, it wouldn't hurt to wait and see if the EV tax breaks come up again in Congress.
Part of the proposal that was put on ice would increase the manufacturer's sunset total to 600,000 vehicles, enough to bring GM and Tesla vehicles back into qualifying territory. That same proposal would create a $2,500 incentive for used EV purchases. Another part of the proposal would apply the full credit at the point of sale. This change would mean that buyers could take it as a discount on the car's price rather than waiting until the next tax season to claim it as a deduction. While as a percentage, EV sales growth is exponential, these vehicles represent about 4% of overall sales. If manufacturers build more EVs than the market wants, two things will happen. Prices will come down and there will be increased pressure for more federal subsidies in order to boost electric car sales. In either scenario, you win. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe on my channel. And write in comments what is your favorite electric car.